Chapter 2 It was weeks after the incident at the museum and people had still denied Mrs. Dodd's existence. Naruto had watched Percy spend days after the trip questioning everyone about Mrs. Dodd's. But they would always look at him as if he had gone insane. Every one of them had said there had never been a Mrs. Dodds at Yancey and that Mrs. Kerr had been the math teacher since winter break ended. Naruto was relieved at that as Percy was not yet ready to learn the truth about himself. However, there was one person who could not completely convince Percy and let him realize something was up. Much to Naruto's ire and Percy's happiness. Grover had always been a bad liar. When he lied, he stuttered, his brow began to get a little sweaty, and he always tried to avoid people's gazes. This is exactly what happened when Percy asked him about Mrs. Dodds. He would say he didn't know what Percy was talking about and that there had never been a teacher by that name at Yancey before. But Percy knew he was lying every time. Naruto made a mental note to teach Grover how to lie better when everything had settled down. Naruto had also spent this time getting payback on Nancy. He had already done numerous pranks on her like paint bombing her room, hanging all her clothes from the school's flagpole, and pinning her to the wall with staples and a sign saying, Please return this rabid animal to the wild where it belongs. It left the whole school in hysterics and made Nancy avoid them like the plague. But right now, the two were in Percy's dorm room studying for their upcoming Latin exam, or in Percy's case, trying to study. Grover had gone for a walk to clear his head, so it was just the two of them studying. Uh, this is impossible. Percy groaned as he threw his Latin textbook against the wall. I try to read, but it either goes in one ear and out the other, or the words get all scrambled up. He said sighing. Don't give up Percy, you'll get it eventually. I mean we have dyslexia, it's always going to be harder for us than others. Naruto said looking up from his book one of his moms had left him. This coming from the guy with a photographic memory that also likes learning this stuff. Percy said grouchily. Naruto shrugged at that and looked back down at his book. I can't control the fact I have that kind of memory, and as for liking this stuff my mom liked it, so I do, it helps me feel closer to her. Naruto said back in answer. Percy looked down for a second at that, then picked his textbook up off the floor. How am I supposed to remember difference between Chiron and Sharon? It's completely the same. Percy said aggravated. Well besides the fact that one has AI in it and the other has an A in it, one trains heroes and the other ferries the dead. Naruto explained looking up from his book. Percy just sighed in aggravation at his textbook. Why don't you ask Mr. Brunner for help? I'm sure he is still in his office and since you are one of his favorite students, I'm sure he will give you a few tips. Naruto said closing and laying down his book. Do you think that would be, okay? Percy asked hopefully looking up from his book slowly. I don't see why not. He is a teacher after all. So, if a student needs help, he is supposed to help right? I'll come with you, I could use the break anyway. Naruto said standing up and stretching. Okay let's do it, and thanks. Percy said standing up and receiving a nod from Naruto. They left the room and headed towards their Latin teacher's office. As the two approached Mr. Brunner's office they noticed his lights were still on and the door was open a little. As Percy was about to walk in, they heard voices inside and were surprised to find Grover talking with Mr. Brunner. Curiosity got the better of them and they learned in closer so they could better hear what was being said. Worried about Percy and Naruto sir, they heard Grover say surprising them both. Usually, it was the other way around. 
alone this summer, Rover was saying. I mean, a kindly one in school. Now that we know for sure, and they know too dash dot. We would only make matters worse by rushing them, Mr. Brunner said. We need Percy to mature more and Naruto, so you don't need to worry about him. But they may not have time, the summer solstice deadline dash, Grover begun before being cut off. We'll have to be resolved without Percy, let him enjoy his ignorance while he still can and as I said Naruto can handle himself. Mr. Brunner said in a strict tone. Sir, they saw her. Grover began to be cut off again. His imagination, Mr. Brunner, insisted. The mist over both the students and staff will be enough to convince him of that. But he has been asking questions, sir, I don't know how much longer I can lie to him. Grover said sadly. You have to, Grover. I know it's difficult and that they're your friends now, but it will be safer. Mr. Brunner said in a kind tone. Sir, I. I can't fail in my duties again. Grover's voice was full of emotion. You know what that would mean. You haven't failed, Grover, Mr. Brunner said kindly. I should have seen her for what she was. Now let's just worry about keeping Naruto and Percy alive until next fall dash. Thud. Mr. Brunner stopped talking when Percy accidentally dropped his textbook causing a loud thud to echo throughout the hallway. Damn. Naruto thought before he grabbed Percy's arm and the textbook and quietly ran back to their dorm room. Back in the hallway, Mr. Brunner spoke. Nothing, he mumbled. My nerves haven't been right since the winter solstice. Mine either. Grover said. But I could have sworn. Go back to your dorm, Mr. Brunner told him. You have a long day of exams tomorrow. Don't remind me. Grover groaned out. The lights turned out in Mr. Brunner's office and the two left, but as the two walked a strange clopping sound echoed. Back in the dorm room Grover walked in to see Naruto and Percy studying. With Percy at the desk and Naruto on Percy's bed leaning against the wall. Hey guys. Grover said as he walked in and sat down on his bed. Hey Grover. Percy and Naruto said together. Man, Percy you look terrible. Grover said. It's just all this studying Grover you know how it is. Percy said. As Percy and Grover talked Naruto looked over at Grover and wondered what they meant by the winter solstice. And wondered if it had to do with what the Fury was looking for back at the museum. He also wondered if he and Percy were in more danger than he first thought. The next afternoon, Naruto and Percy were leaving the three-hour Latin exam both mentally exhausted. The test was a lot harder than they thought it would be. Naruto had it a little bit easier as his memory helped a little. But Percy had it worse as the words kept swimming around and getting more jumbled. Even with all their studying they weren't sure how well they had done. Both were worried that Mr. Brunner may have known they had heard his and Grover's conversation last night but were relieved when he just called them over to hand them their grades. Percy had failed miserably and slumped while Naruto had just barely got a passing grade. Percy, Mr. Brunner said. Don't be discouraged about leaving Yancey. It's. It's for the best. Percy isn't going to take this well. Naruto thought as he noticed the downcast look on his face. Okay, Sir Percy mumbled. I mean. Mr. Brunner said wheeling his chair back and forth, like he wasn't sure what to say. This isn't the right place for you. It was only a matter of time. Right. Percy said, trembling. 
No, no, Mr. Brunner said. Oh, confound it all. What I'm trying to say is. You're not normal, Percy. That's nothing to be dash. Thanks, Percy blurted out. Thanks a lot sir, for reminding me. Percy then picked up his backpack and walked out. That could have gone better. Naruto said as Mr. Brunner looked to where Percy left and nodded. Perhaps I was a little hard on him. Mr. Brunner said aloud. You're just looking out for him. What person in a place of authority doesn't want that for the people they take care of? Naruto said getting a nod of appreciation from Mr. Brunner. Well, what about you Mr. Namikaze, what will you be doing now? Mr. Brunner asked getting a serious look from Naruto. Some things have come up, I'll be going back to the orphanage earlier than expected to do some last-minute stuff. I have a feeling me and Percy will be joining you earlier at camp than expected. Naruto said seriously getting a nod from Mr. Brunner. Well then keep yourself safe till then. Mr. Brunner said getting a nod from Naruto. You may want to watch for the next few days for you sir, see you later Mr. B. Naruto said as he grabbed his stuff and headed to the door. I'll do that Mr. Namikaze, goodbye. Mr. Brunner said before getting a contemplative look on his face. Late run, that day. Naruto sat on the bus with Percy and Grover heading to the bus terminal with many other kids from their school on board. Naruto had already told Percy and Grover his plans of heading to the orphanage earlier than expected saying something had come up. Grover was being really jumpy during the ride looking around everywhere. Percy finally got fed up with it and asked him looking for kindly ones? Grover nearly jumped out of his seat and had a look that made him look like he was having a heart attack. W what do you mean? He finally asked. We kind of overheard your conversation with Mr. Brunner last night. What was that all about? Percy asked while Naruto gave him a serious nod. Grover's eye twitched. How much did you hear? Not much. What's the solstice deadline? Naruto asked seriously. It's nothing I was just talking to Mr. Brunner about how you guys might be getting overstressed or something because of you believing in this Mrs. Dodd's character dash. Grover started before getting interrupted by Naruto. You're a really bad liar, Grover, Naruto said, pointing at his ears. Whenever you lie your ears get bright pink like they are now. Grover pulled out some grubby business cards from his front pocket. Just take these, okay? In case you need me this summer. The card was in fancy script, which was murder on Naruto and Percy's dyslexic eyes, but they finally made out something like. Grover Underwood Keeper Half-Blood Hill Long Island, New York 009-009 Wow fancy writing. Something a big business would have. Naruto said. Grover, Percy said. What exactly are you supposed to be protecting us from? He asked. However, before Grover could answer there was a huge grinding noise under their feet. Black smoke began to pour out of the dashboard and the whole bus filled with a smell of rotten eggs. Everyone out. The bus driver called causing people to groan as he pulled over to the side of the road. Well, this is just messed up. Naruto said as everyone began pilling of the bus and he noticed they were on some old country road. Hey, what are they starring at? Percy called getting Naruto's and Grover's attention. Percy pointed to the other side of the road, and they saw what looked like an old fruit stand. There was a whole variety of different colored fruit in the stand, 
making it look very colorful and tropical. However, there were three old ladies to the side of it in rocking chairs, knitting one humongous sock. All three women looked very ancient in everyone's eyes, with pale faces wrinkled like fruit leather, silver hair tied back in white bandanas, and bony arms sticking out of bleached cotton dresses. Naruto narrowed his eyes when he realized they were looking right at Percy. No 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 no, Grover muttered under his breath as a look of terror appeared on his face tell me they're not looking at you Percy. They are, aren't they? He finally asked. Yeah. Weird, huh? Percy said in a disbelieving tone. You think those stocks would fit me? Naruto gave Percy a disbelieving look at that, then narrowed his eyes back on the old ladies. This isn't the time to joke. Come on let's get back on the bus. Grover said grabbing both boys' arms. Hey, watch it, they both said before an audible snip could be heard. They looked over to see that the yarn that one of the elderly ladies had in her hands was now cut by a giant pair of scissors another was holding. Naruto's eyes widened at the implications that could mean for Percy. No no no, Grover kept muttering before he scuffled to the front of the bus and kicked it as hard as he could. Surprisingly the bus shuddered, and the engine roared back to life. The passengers cheered. Darn right! Yelled the driver. He slapped the bus with his hat. Everyone back on board, good thinking kid. He said, giving Grover a pat on the back. Come on let's get back on the bus. Grover said dragging them back on. When Naruto and Percy looked back to the other side of the road, they were surprised to see that the old ladies were gone with no trace they were ever there. What the hell? Percy thought. I saw them there I know I did. Naruto was lost in thought at that moment and nodded absent-mindedly to himself. As everyone got back on the bus and retook their seats, Grover was muttering quietly to himself, but Naruto and Percy heard what he was saying. This is not happening. This can't be like last time. I cannot fail again. I already let Talia down I can't let them down too, they heard him say. Percy looked over at Grover then as Naruto was still lost in thought. Let who down? Who is this, Talia girl? You got a girlfriend that we don't know about Grover? Percy asked him. And oh, Grover said waving his arms in front of him. It's nothing but Percy, Naruto you guys have to be careful please. I can't protect you when you ask too many questions. Naruto gave Grover a deadpan look at that. While Percy looked at him skeptically, how was Grover supposed to protect them? They normally protected him. Grover what the hell is going on? Percy asked getting frustrated. What do you mean protect us? Grover looked around worried. Let me walk you home from the bus station, Percy. Promise me. Grover asked hurriedly. He was looking at him mournfully like he was already picking the kinds of flowers for his funeral. So Percy agreed figuring that if he didn't Grover would just freak out some more and draw attention to them. The rest of the journey back was silent before they finally arrived at the bus terminal. I'll see you guys later sometime. Naruto said as he patted them both on the back and gave Grover a meaningful look to which Grover nodded. Naruto then went and jumped onto his transfer bus. But looked back just in time to see Grover run to the bathroom and Percy jump into a cab and shook his head sadly. A few hours later. Naruto had just walked into the front door of the orphanage and was looking around for Stephanie. Naruto, what are you doing back now I thought you said you were going to be gone for a few more days. Stephanie asked him from the second floor landing. 
Some things came up. Kane, we talk in your office privately? Naruto asked her to receive a nod and a wave to come on up. Once they were in her office Naruto explained what had happened this year at the school. When he was done, they both had a grave looks on their faces. I see from what you've told me your friend probably will end up on the run from something and won't get to Camp Half-Blood till sometime tonight. Probably after midnight. Stephanie said thoughtfully. Yeah, I had the same thought on the matter. Naruto said in exhaustion. Well from what we have figured out we know you have about four or five hours before you will need to head out. Why don't you go get all your stuff ready and make sure Kurama knows when to be ready to go, then rest for a while. Stephanie suggested receiving a nod from Naruto. Who got up and left the room after giving her a hug? Naruto entered his room and looked around gauging what he would need to pack for his trip to Camp Half-Blood later tonight. Finally, he just decides to pack his version of a survival pack which consisted of Rope, first aid kit including two small squares of ambrosia and a vial of nectar, his extra katana and bow and arrows, a sleeping bag and tent, and some food. He also put his shoe knife into his boot for a hidden weapon. He then went outside to look for Kurama who had decided back at the academy to make his own way home instead of riding the bus. He found him curled up at the base of a tree resting. He whistled and Kurama jumped up and was instantly at his side. We will be heading out tonight two hours before midnight for Camp Half-Blood. Naruto told Kurama as he looked down at him. Okay boss, I'll be ready then. Kurama yipped out. Good. Because some things happened on the way to the bus terminal that makes me think Percy will be making his way there tonight as well, whether he wants to or not. And whether he truly knows or not. Naruto said as he looked out at the area in thought. I won't ask what happened, but I'll be ready if we run into them. Kurama yipped out again. Good, now come on we're going to rest for a while. Naruto said as he led the way back to his room and laid down on his bed. Later that night around midnight. Naruto and Kurama were running as fast as they could down the road towards Half-Blood Hill. They had just seen lightning arc down on the road ahead of them and heard an explosion. Naruto knowing it was probably Percy took off running while ordering Kurama to take his bigger form that was the size of a hellhound. Naruto's mind was racing over what creature could be attacking Percy and coming up with strategies to defeat it. As they crested the hill Naruto cursed as he saw the Minotaur charging Percy, and he knocked his bow ready to fire an arrow. But his jaw dropped for a moment at what he saw happen next. Percy in a moment of rage had jumped at the Minotaur but went higher than expected and landed on its head. Naruto then saw him break off one of its horns but then get thrown off to the ground next to Percy. Naruto then used his zippo to light the end of his arrow on fire and shot it at the monsters hitting it in the leg. Naruto then ran forward as the monster bellowed in pain. He had already returned his bow to its pendant form on his necklace and changed his zippo into its katana form. Percy grabbed Grover and run I'll deal with this thing. Naruto shouted to get Percy's attention also managing to get the monster's attention that immediately charged him. Naruto, what are you doing here? Percy asked in confusion as he watched Naruto dodge the monster, then take a swing at it cutting off its other horn. Now is not the time Percy just grabbed Grover and run. Naruto said receiving a nod from Percy who grabbed Grover and began to move as fast as he could to the tree his mom pointed to. The Minotaur noticing Percy getting away had refocused on him and charged. Percy was just a few steps away from the tree when he was hit from behind by the monster and flung past the tree landing at the feet of two people before passing out. Naruto had cursed when he saw the monster had charged after Percy and had ordered Kurama after it. 
Karama had taken off after it at a dead sprint reaching it at the same time as it hit Percy. Karama had then swiped it across the throat with his claws, causing it to erupt in a shower of gold sparks. Good job Karama, let's go check on Percy and Grover. Naruto said when he reached him. He received a nod from Karama who had already changed back to his regular fox form, and they ran to where they saw Percy and Grover fall. Naruto saw Mr. Brunner and a girl looking over Grover and Percy, so he slowed his pace down and walked calmly towards them while checking out Mr. Brunner's new look. He was no longer in his wheelchair but that didn't surprise Naruto much as he had his suspicions on who he really was, and the next thing he saw confirmed them for him. Mr. Brunner had the lower half of a horse marking him as a centaur. As he reached them, he noticed Mr. Brunner and the girl looking at him expectantly. Hello Mr. Brunner, or should I say Chiron? Naruto said as he bent down and picked up Karama. He then looked at the girl and asked, and you are? Um, I'm Annabeth Chase. The girl answered. Naruto Namikaze. Naruto said nodding his head to her. He looked at Grover and Percy. They're unconscious, aren't they? He asked receiving a nod from them both. Bring them inside. Chiron said. A few moments later. It's good to see you again Chiron. Naruto said. It's good to see you again too Naruto, Chiron said. It seems you were right about us needing to keep an eye out for you and Percy. He added. Um. Chiron who is this? Annabeth asked as she re-entered the room after checking on Percy and Grover. Oh, forgive me Annabeth, this is Naruto. Chiron said nodding his head to her. He is the boy I was telling you about that was staying at Stephanie's orphanage, he added after a moment. Oh okay, that explains why he wasn't freaking out when he saw you. Annabeth said after thinking for a moment. Now then Naruto, I will have a camper show you around and show you your cabin for later. Then you can come back here, and once Percy wakes up, we will talk more. Chiron said as he walked towards the door. All right then. Naruto said as he followed him out. Annabeth, please keep an eye on Percy please. Chiron asked receiving a nod from her. Once they were outside, Naruto looked around and whistled appreciatively. This place was huge. He notices the hill from before was to their left and not far from them. He also notices a group of cabins in a U-shaped pattern. Clarice, Silena. Come here please. Chiron shouted out to two girls off to the side of the cabins. Both girls looked up and saw Chiron and one of the new guys everyone was talking about. Naruto noticed that they were both pretty tall, but that one of them was a more petite girl with long black hair and blue eyes. While the other was more athletically built with a gruffer look and a fighter's appearance. She had red eyes and shorter black hair. Naruto thought they both looked pretty cute. What? The gruffer looking girl asked as they reached them. Clarice, I would like you and Silena to show Naruto here around the camp. I will have Annabeth show Percy around ladder when he wakes up. Chiron said to them. Fine, got to welcome the newbie anyway. Clarice said with an evil smirk while Silena sighed. Naruto just raised an eyebrow at her. So, you're Clarice and Silena? Naruto asked. Well, I'm Naruto Namikaze. He added. Well, it's nice to meet you Naruto. Silena said smiling. Clarice just nodded her head to him. Well come on, we haven't got all day. Clarice said, already walking away. 
Silena sighed again and gestured at Naruto to follow them. They soon caught up to her, and Silena and Clarice started to point out things in the camp as they showed him around. They passed the dining pavilion, the camp store, the armory, the stables, the archery rage, the canoeing lake, the sing-along amphitheater, and the arena. As they passed each of them either Clarice or Silena would comment on it. Naruto had smirked when he saw the archery range and the arena. They soon ended up back where they began, and Clarice and Silena then led him towards the center of the cabins. Okay, listen closely because I am only going to say this once. There are twelve cabins in all. Each one representing one of the twelve Olympian gods it was made for. Their kids are the only ones who live in there. Clarice explained to him receiving a nod from Naruto. Since you have just arrived and your Olympian parent hasn't claimed you yet, you will be staying in cabin 11, the Hermes cabin. Silena added getting another nod from Naruto. Whose kids are you two? Naruto asked them. The God of War. Clarice said pointing to a red cabin with a five on the door. The Goddess of Love. Silena said pointing to a cabin with a blue roof and a ten on the door. Naruto nodded at their answers and asked them to continue. Right, now we have the rest of the cabins. Number one is Zeus and it's vacant, number two is Hera and it's honorary, number three is Poseidon and it's vacant, number four is Demeter, number five is as you know Ares, number six is Athena, number seven is Apollo. Number 8 is Artemis, which is mostly honorary except for when the hunters come, number 9 is Hephaestus, number 10 is as you know Aphrodite, number 11 is as you know Hermes. And number 12 is Dionysus. Clarice explained with Silena adding stuff in. Naruto looked at the cabins and nodded while noting there weren't any cabins for the minor gods and goddesses or for Hades or Hestia. Now it's time to officially welcome you. Clarice said grinning wickedly causing Silena to sigh. Others in the area grimaced at her words. Clarice was breaking in another newbie. Clarice quickly lunged forward trying to get Naruto into a headlock, but her eyes widened when he simply sighed, stepped her causing her to land hard on the ground. Silena and the others in the area had broken out into giggles when she hit the ground. Clarice was about to jump to her feet and try again when she suddenly froze at the feeling of a knife at her throat. Everyone else had also got quit at that. That was a good try Clarice, but I have been training in combat since I could walk. Naruto said as he moved the knife away from her throat and held out his hand to her. Clarice blushed at being seen losing against a newbie but accepted his help up. You got lucky this time Naruto. Clarice said as she caught her balance. Sure, he did Clarice. Silena said while giggling receiving a glare from Clarice. Well how about you girls lead me back to the big house, so Chiron knows the tour is done. Naruto said trying to make sure they didn't get into an argument. Both Clarice and Silena nodded at that and lead him away. Once they were in the big house Clarice and Silena turned to him. Well Naruto this is the end of the tour. Silena said with Clarice nodding. Yeah, it was nice meeting you girls see you later. Naruto said while giving them a little wave as they began to walk away. Both girls waved back, then turned around and Naruto saw them become deep in conversation with each other. Naruto then walked into the living room where he saw Chiron playing a card game with someone he hadn't met yet. He also noticed he was back in his wheelchair. Ah uh, Naruto welcome back, I see Clarice's little welcome plan didn't work. Chiron said when he finally noticed him. Yeah, it'll take more than that to get me, Naruto said while laughing. He then looked around at the other guy. Ah uh, yes, Naruto let me introduce you to Mr. D. 
Chiron said as he noticed Naruto looking at the guy. Naruto looked the guy over and noticed he had bloodshot eyes while wearing a leopard print shot. He had messy black hair and was rocking the bearded look and had a Diet Coke can in his hand. Well, I guess I must say it, welcome to Camp Half-Blood. Mr. D said in an annoyed voice. Well let's see you have an attitude, look like you are experiencing a constant hangover, and you smell a little like grapes. You must be the wine god, nice to meet you. Naruto said in a cheery tone of voice. Well, well you're correct. It's good to see not all demigods first arriving here are idiots. Dionysus said with a small smile. It's not, not that difficult, you just have to know what to look for. Naruto said then turned to look at Chiron expectantly. Well since Percy won't be fully awake till tomorrow, I would like you to stay near here. Chiron said to him when he noticed his look. Will do sir, see you guys later. Naruto said giving a little wave as he left the room. Well, that boy seems like he won't have much trouble fitting into our world. Mr. D commented as he turned back to his cards. Yes, I totally agree with you Mr. D. Chiron said back as he placed his cards down. Naruto was just leaving the front door of the big house when he heard a shout of frustration from inside and snickered as he walked off.